Cool. Okay, so now that you have your sample drilled uh, so that we can put a wire through it, um, and then you want to sand the burrs off of it uh, so that it sits flat. So when it's on the anvil here, that it sits flat. So what we're going to do is we're always going to start with this machine because this one's set up for Rockwell C. Rockwell C is a is the for harder materials. And the reason is because this one has a diamond indenter. The other scale that we're going to use is called Rockwell B and it has a steel indenter. And if I put a piece of hardened steel in the Rockwell B tester, then I will dent the indenter. And then everyone will have bad data after that. So um, your sample, because you could drill a hole in it, obviously is probably soft when you start out. It's an unknown sample. Um, what we're gonna do is, um, there should be several samples sitting here, so you're, gonna, you're going to test the samples. Um, there'll be a box and they'll be labeled, and then you're gonna keep good track of um, the data. You're gonna do a whole data set yourself. So you can see this says loosen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen um, the jack screw here and I'm gonna put in my sample, okay? Make sure it sits flat. Um, we don't wanna get near the edge. You don't wanna get near another test. When you do a hardness test, it, it, it work hardens the area nearby. And so we wanna make sure that if you don't, you, you go like two or three diameters or you know an eighth of an inch at least away from the previous test. Okay, so I'm gonna put it under here, kind of more or less in the center, and I'm gonna start tightening. And so let's zoom in a little bit on the, uh, on the scale here. Notice I can move this a bit back and forth. And then I'm going to turn this in the tightening direction and pay close attention to this smaller dial here. And what's gonna happen is once I start contacting, and don't do it really quick, just do it nice and slow here. So once I start contacting, okay, it's contacting, and I'm gonna slowly turn this around two times. And you're looking at this little other dial here. And what I'm trying to do is get that needle straight up and down. You can't go backwards. So I'm going to get close. Okay, I went past it a teeny bit. That's not a huge deal. I can move this one or two data points just to get it zeroed. Okay, so now you're on the, that little needle's on the red and I'm on the center of the scale, okay? Now, now we're gonna go to the actual operation of the machine. So what we need to do is we're gonna put 150 kilograms, which is what's set for right now. You're not gonna mess with that. We're gonna, they're just gonna put 150 kilograms on that little bitty diamond there. Right now we have something like 10 or 15 kilograms. I can't remember what it is, but there's a preload. And then we're gonna put a, the, the full load on it. And then we're gonna go back to the preload and it's gonna measure the difference that it indented into the surface. And it's only a few thousandths of an inch. So it has to measure that really accurately. So what I'm gonna do, is I want to make sure, um, actually before I even start, I want to make sure it's in this read position, but it should be because the last person should have put it in that position. This, this handle moves back and forth. I am, going to, I am going to pull this towards me. This is the loading lever and I pull on that. And what I just did was I released this, this lever and you see it's coming forward hydraulically. Meanwhile, the dial's coming around and around and eventually it stops. This is not when you read it. If you read it now, I would get a Rockwell C reading of about, I don't know, eight or nine. It's a meaningless number until you push this handle back in the read position. You see very nicely it's labeled for you. That's the read position. Rockwell C is the black scale on the outside. So if I go around and I see it is at 41, Rockwell C 41. Okay, the inner scale that's red is the Rockwell B scale. And we're not gonna use that on this unit because I have a different machine set up. Otherwise, the flow of this operation is gonna be, um, gonna be really slow. Okay, when I'm done with that, I'm gonna push the jack screw in the loosening direction, okay? And I'm gonna take at least three readings. They need to be really close to each other. So if I take another reading, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to move it an eighth of an inch away from the last reading. Okay. And I'm tightening. Go around twice. Okay. I'm going to zero that out. I'm going to pull the lever. Wait till the hydraulics come forward. And once that handle stops moving, I'm going to flip it back and I'm going to read it. 
and now we're 40. They should be within like one or two hardness points, okay? If they're five or six, um, I don't know, maybe you got on a piece of scale or it's too close to the edge or something like that. So you should, each reading should be within one or two data points uh, on the Rockwell C scale, okay? Um, I'm gonna loosen that again. Why do you always come to this one first? I did say it's because you wanna make sure that we don't dent the indenter on the Rockwell B. So if this was less than 20, and um, this particular one isn't, but many of them will be. If it was less than 20 on that Rockwell hardness scale, um, we are gonna go to the Rockwell B. Otherwise, the data that you took off of here is fine. You're just gonna take that data down um, write it in your, um, on your lab handout and, and keep that data for when we put it on the spreadsheet, okay? So let's say that that reading was actually only 20. Now I'm gonna come over here to the Rockwell B hardness scale. And so um, I need a sample that's soft. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, as you just tested one at Rockwell 40 or so, um, that one, we would take that data. If I have a sample that is softer than that, I'm gonna have to use the Rockwell B scale because Rockwell C is not accurate under Rockwell C20, okay? So below Rockwell C20, you're gonna go over to Rockwell B. And then what we'll do is the data actually will have to translate back into Rockwell C. Sounds kind of tricky, but um, in fact, it's not. So we're going we're gonna to take this hardness test to make sure what, 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 if this is below 20, but it should be. So I'm going to tighten this up. Okay, so let's get in close on that. And so as soon as I touch it, you'll see the big dial moves. Going to go around twice. And I'm going to call that good if I go past it. There we go, go right there. Okay. I'm gonna pull the lever forward, release the weight, 150 kilograms going on it right now. And a meaningless reading now until I flip that lever forward and I'm reading Rockwell B of 19 and a half. So we're under 20, okay? So now we're gonna take that sample. We're not gonna even record that, that data point because it's below 20 and we're gonna go over here one of the other ways you know it's really soft is that the indentation will be really large, okay? If it's a harder material, you could hardly see the indentation in it. So we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna get, get away from those other readings, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now this machine is somewhat different. It's actually the, the operation of it is the opposite of that machine, okay? So you need to read the side of it here, it says, test position and loading position. The test position, you wanna have it in the test position to start out, okay? You flip, the lever flips forward to to, um, to load the, put the load on the, on the sample, and then we flip it back to read it, okay? So it's similar to the other one, except the direction is opposite, okay? So I'm gonna tighten this up um, until I touch the indenter. Um, by the way, the conversion for Rockwell B to Rockwell C is right here on the wall. The equation is Rockwell C is equal to Rockwell B minus 80. Okay, so Rockwell B 100 is Rockwell C 20. So we should be somewhere around 100 on this. So now you can see it's starting to go around. The now this one, I believe it's three times around till I get it zeroed, okay? And then instead of turning the dial up here, I have a fancy little thing down here that I turn with my fingers and it was way off. I need to come back over here. And see it says set. Even though the readings don't read zero on this particular one, um, that's where you set it to, okay? Now I'm gonna load it. I can do that two different ways. I can either flip the lever forward, but this is, this is how you're supposed to do it. You push that little lever down and you can see it releases the hydraulic uh, force on there. And in this case, it's only putting 100 kilograms on it. If you look at the back here, there's two weights where there's normally three. Um, the third weight, if we look at it, says 
60 plus 40 plus 50 is 150 kilograms. I'm going to take that off. This is not 150 kilograms, of course. Uh, it is just the equivalent weight when you put the hydraulic, uh, when it goes on the hydraulic cylinder. Okay. Now, if I read this right now, it looks like it's Rockwell B75. That's not right. If I flip it here, okay, it's actually reading a little bit over the zero. So I'm reading the B scale, which is the red number. Now this is gonna confuse you a little bit. Remember I said it's gonna be around 100? Okay, that's 100 actually, 90, 100. It's actually 107. Now that sounds funny because the last one was um, right at 20, but remember it's not very accurate when you get down to 20. I'm gonna take three readings on this. Um, and, and then uh, I'm gonna see if they're, they're similar to each other. Uh, the indentation is slightly different, okay? Um, I should have probably sanded this surface a little bit better. Um, it's got some oxide on it. There's the indentation for the Rockwell B. It's a lower load, so it doesn't quite go in as deep. Okay, so we would write 107 down. And then um, I'm going to take another one here. That lever's in the forward position. By the way, if this lever is not in the forward position and you start preloading it like this, you'll actually damage the machine. So um, please watch this video uh, multiple times if you have to, or watch it right before you run the test. Okay, hydraulic force is going on it. And when that lever stops moving, then we can flip it back. And this one's 109. So, um, in fact, the other one was a little off. If you're getting really weird readings from this, it may be that the person before you put a piece of hardened steel in there. So come and get me, and I will take out the um, very small little steel ball inside of here. Don't do this yourself, please. There is a 1 16th inch diameter steel ball bearing on here. And what we can do is look at it under the microscope, make sure there's not a little flat on there from someone messing around with it. And I think that one looks good. It's a little bit hard to tell. Um, okay, so that's how you take a Rockwell B hardness. What you're gonna eventually do is record all that data. And when you do the write up, we're going to convert that Rockwell B to Rockwell C so that all the data can be on the same graph. Now you know how to operate both the, um, the new hardness tester and the older hardness tester. They're both manual machines, no electronics to go bad. Uh, and this one I think is probably um, at least 50 years old and it's still working fine.